NASA has identified a rapidly growing black hole that was long considered a critical missing link to the early universe. Scientists say the black hole, dubbed GNZ7Q, went unnoticed in one of the most highly studied areas of the sky. Astronomers found it using data from the Hubble Space Telescope. Dr. Jennifer Wiseman is the senior project scientist on the Hubble Space Telescope. She is an astrophysicist at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. It is so great to have you with us, Dr. Wiseman. First question, might this super black hole get a better name, GNZ7Q? It doesn't really roll right off the tongue, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Astronomers are not known for our poetic naming, but I will say this is a very exciting discovery. Absolutely, a major discovery. You know, I, th I found it particularly interesting that as scientists have been searching for this for years, it was actually found in an area that was so well studied. How did it go unnoticed all this time? Well, we have some in incredible images of the deep universe with the Hubble Space Telescope, things like the ultra deep field and things called the goods field. These are fields of galaxies. Some of these galaxies are shining to us from very far away, which means we're looking at them as they were very long in the past. It's taken a long time for the light to get to us. One of these little red dots that was kind of overlooked before in some in one of these galaxy fields turns out to be emission from a very distant galaxy shining from just within 750 million years from the beginning of the universe from the Big Bang. That's a long time ago. And the emission from this red dot seems to be something intermediate from what we would expect from the earliest galaxies where stars are rapidly forming and a little bit later on, when a lot of material starts to uh, uh, aggregate in the cores of these galaxies and become what we call supermassive black holes. Mm -hmm. And eventually those supermassive black holes start shining very brightly as material falling in toward them begins to heat up and we see them as quasars, really bright. But right in the intermediate space between those earliest galaxies starting to form stars and the appearance of these bright quasars at the cores of galaxies, we now see this intermediate object, and it seems to be one of these early supermassive black holes starting to form in the middle of one of the earliest baby galaxies in the universe. I love the concept of a baby galaxy. Uh, how could this discovery help explain some of those mysteries of the early universe? And, and remind our viewers, uh, when this... Um, it's hard. It's sort of hard to discuss this, but but it was it it's it's traced back in its its time period to to actually pretty close to after the Big Bang happened. Tell us a little bit more about how old it is, um, and and what we're learning from it, particularly when it comes to the very foundation of our universe. Sure, I think it's such a privilege that we can use telescopes as time machines because as we look at these very distant objects we're looking farther and farther back toward the beginning of our universe. We think our universe had a spectacular beginning, at least the universe we're experiencing, about 13.8 billion years ago. So we're seeing back to within that first 0.8 of the 13.8 billion year history of the universe. So we're really seeing some of these early galaxies. These are collections of stars and gas and dark matter that we can't see. And what's happening as gravity pulls this material together is that stars are starting to form rapidly within these early galaxies. Some of that material eventually migrates to the core of these infant galaxies. And if there's enough of it, it will compress into very tight volume and become a black hole or even what we call a supermassive black hole. This object appears to be on its way to becoming a supermassive black hole. And so it helps us understand how the earliest collections of gas and the first stars forming out of that gas changed over time to become the more mature galaxies that we see later on. And what's happening in the core of those galaxies as material comes together, forms these supermassive black holes in the core. And for a while, that material falling in toward that black hole lights up in bright emission in X-rays. We call these objects quasars. We can see them in the distant universe. This object has not yet turned on or we can't yet see it yet as a quasar, but we see emission that's kind of intermediate. Some of it tells us that stars are still forming rapidly 
And some of it tells us that material is starting to fall in toward the center of this, uh, this object, this early galaxy. So using different wavelengths of light, like ultraviolet light and infrared light, we're able to discern that this object is kind of intermediate between the earliest galaxies and these earliest quasars that have the big monster super blast, uh, massive black holes in the core. Well, and I love uh, how this is kind of intermediate. Yeah, yeah, I love how you how you describe telescopes as a time machine to see into the past. Yeah. It, you know, the Hubble Space Telescope, it just it's a gift that keeps giving. It's celebrating its 32nd anniversary this Sunday. We've talked a lot on this show about the James Webb Telescope and the future that it holds. And it's so remarkable that this was coming from, from old Hubble, sort of a, a last um, look at me. I still have so much to contribute. Tell us just a little bit about Hubble evolved throughout the years and what does the future hold? Sure. So the Hubble Space Telescope, as you say, we've just celebrated our 32nd anniversary. Hubble is in orbit around the Earth. It's doing very well. And in fact, Hubble is a crucial complement to the new James Webb Space Telescope going forward because these two observatories see different kinds of light. So Hubble, such as in this recent detection of this object that may be growing into a supermassive black hole, is using ultraviolet light to see this kind of energetic emission. The Webb telescope cannot see ultraviolet light. It sees infrared light. So as we look at everything from distant galaxies to even things closer to home in our own galaxy, when we want to study planets and stars nearby, uh, we'll require the, the use of all these kinds of light, the infrared light that the Webb telescope will see, the optical light and the ultraviolet light that Hubble sees, and the light that other observatories like the Chandra X-ray Observatory and telescopes on the ground can pick up. We use all that information together. So Hubble is in good shape and we expect Hubble to be a really key player in astronomy for the coming years along with these other observatories. Really incredible. Dr. Jennifer Wiseman, thank you so much. Thank you.